So we're back from yesterday and you had a worksheet and a tier is a typical type of a question. Uh, I would have given you a circle like this. Like I said, we're going to make a hundred up. Uh, and then I would say number this with pi over twos. Well, first of all, I would say let's figure out where pi is. If you don't know where pi is by now, I have failed you as a teacher. Pi is there. And so you're supposed to be able to know that and always put that there and then try to figure out, well, where would pi over 2 be? I think it's easier to think half of pi. Because pi over 2, welcome. Please uh, find your seat, find the notes that are posted for today. Pi over 2 is halfway to pi. It's there. If you didn't know that, then maybe you don't know what half means. Half means you go halfway there, and that's half of the way to pi. And then this is pi. But I don't think you should call it pi in this context. I think you should call it 2 pi over 2. Because why? Because what comes after 2 pi over 2? 3 pi over 2. You need to learn how to count in radians. These are radians. So 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and then, can I keep going? Yes! 4 pi over 2. But that simplifies, Mr. Server. I know. But if you simplify them, then they don't count as nice. See, if I cancel this off and I just call it pi, then I have to go pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and that doesn't have, like, any logic to it, to me. 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. I could teach a second grader to count that way. 4 pi over 2 would be next. What would be after that? 5 pi over 2. It's really an easy pattern then. Okay? All right, so let's do another one. Uh, I'd say the pi over 6s are the most important ones. So would you make a circle, and then would you put on 1 pi over 6? Hint, it's a sixth of the way to pi. I call it 1 pi over 6, because then you can logically go to 2 pi over 6, etc. All right, now, I know that uh, last night I said I was going to post a key, and I'm just straight up forgot. I just completely forgot that I needed to post that key. And so I'm going to wait and have you hand in the worksheet after you've had a chance to look at the key, because that's how I usually do things. So, so those of you that like, just were confused on what you're supposed to do on that, you can look at the key, get unconfused, fix it, and then you can turn it in tomorrow. All right, so I'm going to post a key tonight. By, the, by having a chance to talk to the kid next to you, I hope we cleared up some of your like, confusion. Well, that's where pi is. But in this context, 1 pi over 6 was right here. Then, would you please label 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 pi over 6? Just put them all in the same circle. You really got to get good at this because it's so obscure. When I say, like, make an angle of 7 pi over 6, you have to have a system. Four, five, six pi over six. So if I said seven pi over six was the key one, I'll make it green. It's going to be there. You've counted enough of them that you could like draw that and go, that's where seven pi over six is. Now would you please make a reference triangle there? There's no triangle yet. But by just dropping to the x-axis, you can make a triangle there. And then you'll know it's a certain kind of triangle. I hope you know all three angles, and I hope you know the side ratios, and you put those on there. Now, I have some kids say, can I just draw the triangle like this? No, you cannot. You can't, because it has to go to the x-axis. That's not the x-axis. This is the x-axis. It has to go like that. And there's my reference triangle. It's just not labeled. So, George, 
I know you know this is a right triangle. Do you recognize it's the something, something, something triangle? 30, 60. Very good. And this one's the 30. Now, how do I know? Because I'm just guessing. No, I know that pi over 6 is 30. I can in my head go 180 is this. 180 divided by 6 is 30. Oh, yeah, this even just looks like a 30-degree angle. So these are all 30s. Every one of these was 30. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. And this is 60 then. And then the side ratios. Spencer, do you have those memorized yet? Oh, yeah. Uh, one, two, and square root. One, two, square root of three. I think it's almost as easy as one, two, three. Okay. Then the most common mistake in circle trig. Nate, do you remember the most common mistake in circle trig? Oh, one, of one of the numbers is negative. Which one is? The one is negative, and Nate, you were like, wait a minute, when you were, so what What? What was making you think? It is also negative square root of three. <laughs> Two of them are negative. So the most common mistake in circle trig is that you just forget negatives. In this case, there was two negatives. I bet a lot of people forgot those. All right, now is this triangle got every angle labeled? Yup. Does it have every side labeled? Yup. And did I forget any, did I make any stupid mistakes? I don't think so. But now I got two kids raising their hands, which makes me nervous. Yes. Oh, okay. How do you tell which ones are negative? When you start all your problems here, you know, that's called the origin. The origin of mankind is where did we all start? Okay, you start there. Do you get to draw this triangle? You're going to have to go left. And in the context of like, you know, like if I was going to graph something, if I go this way, those are negative numbers, right? You know what I mean? So if you go to the left, like this line is going to the left here, then that is a negative direction. And then going down, that's a negative direction. So if I just said, here's a point. Does it have any negatives on it? Yeah, it definitely does. So if this point right here was considered, it would be at negative 4, negative 4, I guess. Negative 4, comma, negative 4. See how they both have a negative on? That's why. Question. Excellent question. The radius is so obscure. It's like, how do you tell whether that's negative or not? And so the uh, originators of math made it very simple for us. It's just defined as the radius can't be negative. So the radius is just always positive. Because otherwise, how would you tell? It's sort of negative because it's kind of going to the left, but it's also going up, and it would be really, really hard to deal with. So you can keep your life really simple. The radius part, which is always the hypotenuse part, never negative. Good questions. Okay, so... Why do you make these things? That's why I wanted to show you yesterday about sine, cosine, and tangent, which comes down to so ka toa. And you had never done sine of a really big angle. This one equates to, well, what is 7 pi over 6? This is a typical test question. What is that in degrees? Well, it's definitely bigger than 180. I can just tell because this is 180. Well, I know it's more than 180, and I could kind of use logic there. Or I could multiply by a fact. Rack your brain. What goes here and here? You would have to show this on the test. You multiply by something. That was day one. When you left day one, I said, if there's only one thing you remember from today, it's that 180 goes with pi. So did you remember to put a pi here and a 180 here? That's how you show that this will cancel this, and then you gotta do a bunch of, like, simplifying. 180 and six, I see both of those uh, can have a six in them. I'm changing this to six times 30, and I know that may, not, may come easier to me than you, but, but you could have figured out that there was a six in there, or if nothing else, you could have canceled the three out. And this six is six times one, so I can cancel this 6 and this 6. And now all of a sudden I'm left with 7 times 30, 210. Will you have to multiply? Yes. 
7 times 30 is something that you would have to be able to do in a pre-cut class. All right. So there's my answer. It was 210 degrees. So I showed you yesterday that what we really need to get to is what is sine of 210. So now you've gotten far enough that you know that's the same as sine of 7 pi over 6 because that's just two different ways to do that angle. One's in degrees, one's in radians. And now you remember from yesterday what sine is, right? Sine includes opposite and hypotenuse. So what angle should I go from, though? The reference angle. That one is the most special. i got three kids. I love them all equally. But in my angles, i got three angles, and one of them is more important than the other ones. It's just the way it is. The one that's the most important is by the center. It's called the central angle. That's the one you always do your trig from. Okay? So from this guy's perspective, please figure out the opposite and the hypotenuse, and you'll have your answer. It's just a fraction. Would you please compare your answer with the kid next to you? I'll pause for a second while you tell me what sine of 210 is, a.k.a. sine of 7 pi over 6. Okay, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Here's opposite, and here's hypotenuse, so negative 1 half. Okay, cool. Honestly, that's one of the hardest questions on the upcoming test. And we're on day, what are we on? Three now. And I've already helped you get through to the hardest kind of question on the test. So if you felt like this last day covered a lot of stuff, it did. It covered a lot of stuff. So now we've made your life a little harder at the beginning, but now it should be easier. But I also know there's some of you that are still a little weak on this. If I just say... Where's 2 pi over 3? Some of you are going to get lost on where it is. Everybody just draw a line where 2 pi over 3 is. Like, for instance, this is not right. It's not there. Figure out where 2 pi over 3 should be. Go, well, where's 1 pi over 3? Where's 2 pi over 3 and where's 3 pi over 3? That's how I find it. Please draw this. Focus on this. This is more important. The worksheet isn't due until tomorrow now. 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3. Riker, how do I do this again? You act like I'm your little brother and I don't get this. Um, you got to start with pi over 3. And where's, how do I know where pi over 3 is supposed to be? Well, you know that 180 equals pi. So, so this is pi. Yeah. Okay. So you can either count backwards. Okay. So and then... Uh, but I'm trying to find 1 pi over 3? Well, 1 pi over 3, you got to start at 0. Here's right. 0. Then you go 1 pi over 3. So that's one-third of the way to here. So it's like about there. Is that kind of right? Okay, so that's 1 pi over 3. Now, now what? Now you keep counting. And you do another third of the way to 2 pi over 3. There's 2 pi over 3. Cool. Now, I ever make, make a reference triangle that has degrees in it. Make a reference triangle for 2 pi over 3. And when you make the triangle, it's not good enough to make the triangle. You have to label it. Okay, did you draw a triangle right here? And did you realize that this was the 60? You know, because that's 60 and that's 60. And then this must be the 30 and this must be the 90. And then this must be 1, 2, and the square root of 3. And if you did this for your test, I would cry a little bit because there's two things wrong. Not just one thing, two things. Because they're going to say, and I never maybe said this, so... 
I'm, they're going to say, make a reference triangle and be sure to label the reference angle. Well, there's three angles labeled, and I never really called out which one was a reference angle. That one. If you like circle it, that'd be good enough to show me that you knew that was the reference angle. Even better, put like RA, and I'll know for sure you knew that that was the reference angle. And there's one more mistake. It's negative. It's negative. So easy to forget that, isn't it? Now, if you're like, how did you know where to put the one there? Like, I get confused on which side is the one. Well, across from the smallest angle will be the smallest side. And one is way smaller than two, isn't it? And one is smaller than the square root of three, isn't it? And they'll always be this way. The smallest angle goes with the smallest side. Here's the medium size angle, and it goes with the medium size number. And the biggest angle goes with the biggest number. All right. Cool. Now that we've drawn that, it would be easy to ask you, what is the cosine of 2 pi over 3? On day 3, this is awesome. We've gone from zero kids in here knew the ratios on the 30-69 triangle. And very few could just find sine of an angle. A few of you could. To, like, you get what a radian is. I think some of you do. And you can find things like cosine of 2 pi over 3. Okay, cosine. Ka. I always go back to that. Cosine is ka. So ka toa, you know? Adjacent. How is that adjacent? Because it's right next door to the 60 over hypotenuse, negative one-half. Raise your hand if you had negative one-half. Okay, awesome. So what else is there to know? Oh, there's lots of things. But for today, all we really have to be able to do is know that there are six functions, not three. So far, all I've done is sine, cosine, and tangent. But there's three more functions that you have to handle when you get to pre-calc, which is where you are. When you first learned these, you only learned about sine, cosine, and tangent, and maybe you thought that's all there was. But there is six functions. So that's the job for today. So let's get into today's lesson. One of the things that they want to take a second on is finding the third side in a right triangle, because they aren't all as nice as three, four, five. So how do you do it? I have an awesome way, and I don't think anybody else is teaching this. And it's really cool. I know a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Heard it a million times. But if you have to write out that all out, it takes forever. So if we just do a few of these a couple times, you'll be able to find the third side so fast. This is an awesome way to do it. So here we go. The answer is always a square root. The answer is always going to be a square root. It's just sometimes the square root works out nice. Okay. So if I'm going to find this third side, 5, 5, and what, you can't just memorize them all. There's too many. You can't possibly memorize them all. So what you do is you take this squared and this squared and add them together and put it in here. So 5 squared, 25. 5 squared, 25. Add them together. This third side is the square root of 50. Do you just get what happened there? You took the square root of the other two sides squared and added. It's the same exact thing that would have happened if you had done a squared plus b squared equals c squared, except just writing that has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steps to write that out. Then you have to put in all the right numbers. Then you have to solve it down. There's so many steps. My way, slap on a square root Square both numbers and stick them in there. It's really quick. Let's try it. What did I say to start with? Little participation. Square root. And then I square both numbers. 10 squared, 100. 8 squared, 64. And I add them together. That's it. Yep. 
But the square root of 164 actually isn't right in this case. There's one small difference. What's different about this one than the one we did a second ago? Yes. We're not finding the hypotenuse this time. So all we have to do different is one thing. Does anybody want to have a theory on what that is? Yes? You are correct. When you're doing the longest side, you know, like the hypotenuse here, this is the longest side, right? When you're doing the longest side, you add. When you're not doing the longest side, you subtract. Now, I bet this one will make more sense to you. Square root of 100 and minus 64 is 36. You kind of recognize square root of 36? What's that? 6. So this is the 6, 8, 10 triangle. Close cousin of the 3, 4, 5 triangle. All the numbers are just double the 3, 4, 5. Okay, so if I give you a triangle and I say this is 3, and this is two. What's that other side? It's not one. Don't just assume it's that. Do that square root thing. Figure out whether you should add them or subtract them. And that's it. It's so easy. Try it. Find the third side, please. Once you practice this a couple times, finding that third side of the right triangle will be easy peasy. And it will come up. Guarantee you there will be one on the test where you have to find the third side in the right triangle. Claire, what did I say to start with? Square root. Very good. Always and forever square both of them. But sometimes, Claire, can you explain after I've squared this and it's 9 and I squared that and it's 4, help me understand what to do in there. Why do I add them? And sometimes I subtract them. But this time, why do I add it? It's the hypotenuse and it's the longest side, and there you go. So the answer is the square root of 13. See how quick that is? Believe me, right now, I think what other people are teaching is this. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And then A is 3 squared plus B is 2 squared equals C squared. And then this is 9 plus 4 equals C squared. And this is 13 equals C squared. And guess what tons of people put on the test? 13. You know, they forget the last step. And then, yes, the, the final answer here, square root, square root. And then technically, this is the absolute value of C equals the square root of 13 and then you got to realize that means technically there's two answers, plus and minus, but a hypotenuse can't be negative, and so therefore it's positive. Do you see how many steps that's got? Versus what I just showed you. See how quick that is? Plus, if you always start with the square root, you won't forget that. See, other kids are going to forget. They're going to get to here, doing it the other way, and they're going to put 13 on that side. Just not even thinking. It's actually the square root of 13. All right, let's see if you really, really got this. Five... 10, what the heck's that? If you put square root first, you're already kept from making the most common mistake when you do it the other way. And then this is 10 squared is 100. I always put the bigger number first because if I'm gonna subtract them, it's easier to have the bigger number first. And then 5 squared is 25. It's not like required that you do that. But if you're going to subtract, you know, you don't really want to have it come out negative. And then since this is the longest side, I'm adding square root of 125. Now, last thing, though, is you're in pre-calc. If we were just in FST, we'd probably say that was fine. But you have to simplify this down. Do you remember how to break that into two square roots? And simplify it down. It's like 3 root 2, you know, like one of those things. See if you can do it. I'd start with two square roots, and then one of them works nice. Riker, what are the two numbers that would work go into this nicely? Mm, I can tell you haven't seen it yet. That's okay. Once you see it, you'll get it. 
Would you agree that 25 would go into 125? Uh, 25 and 5. 25 and 5. And so then this is actually 5, so 5 root 5. That's the final answer for how long this hypotenuse is. Do you always add them? No. If you're finding the not longest side, then you won't add them. So we better try one like that. Let's say this is 3. Let's say this is... Oh, wait, wait. No, we're going to have this one's 10. Then what's this one? Take a sec. It should be so fast now that you just like, go. Oh, square root of this. Boom. Done. Iris, how do I do it again? Square root, yep. 10 squared is 100, 3 squared is 9. Why minus, not plus? It's the shorter side, yep. It's not the longest side. All right, cool. And that's the square root of 91. And I don't think anything goes into 91, so I think I could just leave it that way. All right, cool. Now, let's do slide three right here. This is just reminding you that sine, cosine, and tangent are so katoa. I'll remind you by doing this. S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. -A. So katoa. So that's just reminding you of that. But... What does it say here? Reciprocal trig functions in the blue box. What are those? Well, first of all, what's a reciprocal? A reciprocal is where you flip something over. So if I had like 3 over 2, the reciprocal of it is 2 over 3. So that's what reciprocal means. Recip is like a flip. Okay? So that's what reciprocal means. So, of course, that is involved in the answers. On this page, I strongly recommend that you change to a very light color so it pops uh, in the dark blue box. Uh, maybe even change your marker to white. Uh, whatever works for you. But sine goes with this new trig function called cosecant. It's like, I call them sister functions. Technically, they are reciprocal functions. But, like, did you know that Minnetonka has a sister school in China? There is. There's a, a Minnetonka has a sister school in China, and we, we got this relationship with the school because they're in a suburban setting, kind of like we are. They're a similar size, like how many students they have in China. So Minnetonka has a sister school in China. So it's kind of like us, except in China. So this is a sister function because the answer to it is going to be hypotenuse over opposite. The way I would just remember it is it's just flipped over. The next one, sine, has a sister function also. And it's cosecant. No, wait, I'm, I'm wrong. Uh, it's not cosecant. It is... <laughs> I'm, I'm, okay, oh, I, I see what's happening here. Uh, they have sine equals sine, cosine equals cosine, tangent equals tangent. Uh, okay, I got confused for a second because I... Let me just take a second and talk about these before I move on to this next thing. A lot of people don't know that these are just three-letter abbreviations for the full word. So I technically should have written out here what the full word was. This was actually co secant. But the abbreviation is CSC. Okay? Co secant. This one is secant, and its abbreviation is SEC.
And the same deal, it's a sister function to cosine and it's hypotenuse over adjacent. You just flip over its answer, like this answer here, except flipped. Do you get there's a fair amount of memorizing in this unit? Memorizing lends itself well to making a flashcard. You don't have to, but I can tell you right now, there's like 20 things on this next test that we aren't going to give you on a, on a, like a memorized sheet. You have to have these memorized. One of which is that sine goes with cosecant. And the only way I have to, to tell you like a little, I don't know, trick, I guess you could say, is that S goes with C and C goes with S. The first letters are C and S and C and S. If that helps you, awesome. Otherwise, you just got to memorize. Sine goes with cosecant. Cosine goes with secant. And the last one kind of like seems more logical. Tangent goes with cotangent. Coat. And it's again the flip. So instead of opposite over adjacent, it's adjacent over opposite. Now, I showed you where Sokatoa was, and you know that one forever. This one could be memorized as Cho Sha Cow. No, I think that's kind of dumb uh, because the other one. Sokatoa, all the letters were unique. Here we have too many repeats. Because of the S and the C thing, Cho, Sha, Kao, we got the C and the C. You never get straight which one was cosecant and which one was cotangent. So the Cho, Sha, Kao thing is just mostly a joke. Uh, I honestly wouldn't try to memorize it that way. I would just try to remember that the sister functions are, these are like really important. And a whole, we have a whole nother unit coming where you're gonna use these same relationships and you'll have to know, oh yeah, sine, that one goes with so cosecant. And cosine, that one goes with secant. You'll have to know the sisters. Tangent goes with cotangent. It's the only one that like sounds like it goes together. All right, so let's actually go to this next slide. And first job, you got a triangle, and you don't know the third side. I taught you how to do it. Would you just do it my way for a second, square root of, and you know, find that third side? Because we'll need it. Because you know, we, we do sine, cosine, and tangent, and you'll need all three sides of your triangle. And at the end, you'll probably be like, oh, that makes sense. Square root of nine, it's actually three? How many you got three? Good. Think about it. It's the three, four, five triangle. It's one of the ones you could have probably thought about and knew, but that's okay. You had a system and the system worked. You figured out that that side was three. All right, so this is three. Now, what's the sign? It's just a simple fraction. Mason, what's the sign? It's the opposite over the hypotenuse, so therefore? Opposite. Four over. There we go. Opposite is four over hypotenuse is five. Good. Maybe in your head you had already gone over here in cosecant and flipped it over, and that would have been smart because that's the answer. See how quick it is? It's just a flip. So the sister functions, you just got to know, take the other answer, flip it. Iris cosine adjacent over hypotenuse three over five. And then you may as well just do the secant for me. Five over three. <coughs> Addy, the last one, tangent. Four over three. And then the other one? Three, four. three over four. You now know six string functions. 
Now, I do not, when I get it to a secant question, I do not go try to memorize, was that hypotenuse over adjacent or which one was that? I don't even do secant. I just go do cosine quick and flip it. So like if I ever tell you to do a cotangent problem, I'm actually making you go do a tangent problem and flip it. So it's kind of like I'm making you do two things. If I ever give you a cosecant, don't try to do it directly. Go do the sister function and then flip it. Okay? All right. The next page. So without any help, except they didn't give us like where this angle was. I'm going to say that that angle is right there. Because otherwise, it could have been up on the other corner, and it would have changed the answer. So I think we should put it this way. There's our key angle. Now, you got to figure out where to put the two, where to put the three, and then what's the other side, and then answer all six functions. Typical test question. Can you do it? Once you figure out where the two and the three are, it's not hard. Okay, let's see how you did. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. If you didn't put them in the right place, then the whole thing's goofed up and you should probably fix it quick. This one's square root of 9 and 4, and it's not the longest side, so it's 9 minus 4, so it's the square root of 5. Who had square root of 5? Excellent. Next up, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Well, I already know that one. It's 2 thirds. And that immediately makes me go over here and put 3 over 2. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side is the next door side. Square root of 5 over hypotenuse is the longest one, 3. And then I go over here and flip it, 3 over root 5. And last but not least, tangent. Toa, opposite over adjacent, 2 over square root 5. And then flip it, square root 5 over 2. Okay, cool. Now... There's one last little detail that I need to tell you about that's a small thing, but sometimes it, this is like on the ACT, and it's going to come up on our test this year. If you want to have the denominator not have a square root in it, you might be like, well, I didn't care. I was fine with it. I'm also fine with it, and AP Calc is even fine with it, but there is... Uh, there is a time when you have to clear out the square roots from the denominators because there's this kind of obscure rule in math that you can't divide by a decimal that never ends. Think about that for a second. Why, could you divide by something that actually like keeps going forever and never repeats? It would be really hard to actually divide by something where it never stops. Like, how are you going to really divide by that? So I get, I get it. So it's called rationalizing. And what you do to fix that is you go square root 5, square root 5. Would you agree? I just multiplied it by 1. And the cool thing is now the denominator is 5. And the top is 3 root 5. And I know that doesn't look any better, but it doesn't have a square root in the bottom anymore. That's called rationalizing. 
So if you see one, this one happens a lot. You see that? You're also gonna see, I'll have to put the answer in green at the end, square root of two over square root of four, which is two. This equals this. They are the same thing. I know they don't look the same, but they're equal. And you may not understand why that's a big deal, but this one doesn't have a square root in the bottom and therefore it's better because it's not dividing by something that goes on forever and never ends. It's called rationalizing. We'll talk about that more later, but I just wanted to show you, like on the ACT, they would never have this answer, never ever. They would have this answer because it's been rationalized. feel like I should tell you that, so I told you that. It's not going to come up a lot. It's going to come up some. All right, moving on to this. I think this is a complete repeat of the last one, but this time they gave me cotangent. Ick. I'm going to say, if I ever give you one of those weird functions, immediately just change it to the other function. Instead of cotangent, what do you think I'm going to use? Tangent. And instead of 11 thirds, what do you think I'm going to use? Three elevenths. Do you get, I'm going to peacefully refuse to do that problem. Not going to even try to do it that way. Because this, that'd be easy. If the key angle's there, Toa is opposite over adjacent, and that would be easy. Doing it the other way, not smart. And then I can find the third side, square root of 121 plus 9. And I know I'm probably better at 11 squared than you are, but square root of 130. And then I can do the rest of it. See how from there it's easy? Okay. All right. Last kind that I have to talk about today, and I know we've kind of gone long, but this is such an important uh, lesson. Last one. I have to pick whether I want to do sine, cosine, or tangent of 39. Because I have those three choices. Sine 39, cosine 39, or tangent of 39. And one of them is the smart one to use. Well, from the 39's perspective, would you agree we have the adjacent and we have the hypotenuse, we have adjacent and hypotenuse. You kind of got to go backwards and go, which one would be smart to use then? Sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse? No, I don't have the opposite. That one's out. Cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. I, I have that, so I can do that. Tangent would have been opposite over adjacent, and I don't have the opposite, so tangent's out. See how cosine of 39 was the right one to do? And then there's my equation. Do you know how to clear the fractions? My number one rule, if you can factor it, you should. There's no factoring on this one, though. My number two rule, clear the fractions out. Times by x on both sides. That's not solved, Mr. Server. Okay, it's really close to solved. Do you get, if I want to get x alone, now I have to divide by cosine of 39 and the x is alone and you've solved it. I'm going to show you this more clearly. x times the cosine of 39 equal 23. Now I'm going to divide both sides by the cosine of 39. And that cancels that, and x is alone, and there's my answer. 23 divided by the cosine of 39 degrees. Whoa, heavy duty. Warned you, second semester pre cut not easy. But this isn't that hard. We just had to figure out which of these three functions to use and then solve for x. We'll talk more about that kind later. Right now, uh, I would like to just... Set this one up. Just set it up. Is it sine? Is it cosine? 
or is it tangent? And then we're gonna go and start your homework together. This is the key angle. I don't have hypotenuse. Ooh, that tells me right there it can't be sine. The sine has hypotenuse in it. And cosine has hypotenuse in it too. So it can't be cosine. Must be tangent. Toa, opposite over adjacent. The opposite side is y. Over the adjacent side is 23. This one's easier to solve. How do you clear the fraction? Somebody, how do you clear this? It's easy. Multiply by 23. Boom. Y is alone. 23, tangent of pi over 7. Okay, that's it, boys and girls. Honestly, at this moment, you're almost ready to take the test. So that means we've got plenty of chance to review a lot of things before you take the test. The test isn't until the end of next week. Plenty of time to get smarter between now and then. But we've covered so much. If it feels like it's been really dense, it has been. All right, find that worksheet. I know we're leaving very soon, but find the worksheet. It's not a paper worksheet. It's a, you know, digital. And I got to tell you which ones to skip. So if you could open that up quick, you'll want to cross off some of them. open yet? Excellent. We are for sure going to do one, two, three, and four. Slide it up. We're going to cross off number six, number nine, number 11, number 13, and the very last one, number 16. Six, 9, 11, 13, and 16. That's five problems cut off. That makes it very reasonably sized. Strong recommend that you do this. If you give yourself a night off right here at this critical moment, you're going to be lost tomorrow. And that's not a good place to be on your first unit in second semester. What you're skipping is problems 6, 9, 11, 13, and 16. Okay, that's all I got for you for today.